We have Lanita Norona, the Head of Marketing and Student Outreach at Curtin University, Dubai, to lead a panel of industrialists from IT, engineering, finance, entrepreneurship, as well as tourism and hospitality. We're so happy to have all of you here again. Over to you, Lanita, and have a wonderful session, you guys. Thank you, Karishni. Um, I think we all could use that energy this afternoon. Uh, it's, it is my pleasure to be welcoming all the attendees and students who are watching us from the live platforms and uh, taking you all through some industry insights uh, and to help you prepare for your careers. To quickly walk you through the panel, we have Mr. Sully Ismail representing the IT industry. We have Mr. Prashant Gandhi from finance, Ms. Hiba Nadeem from engineering, Mr. Elias Elsus from hospitality, and lastly, Mr. Abdullah Yunis from entrepreneurship. So thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. Uh, and in the interest of time, I'd like to get started with the questions. Uh, please make, I'll, I'll make it known that this is more of an interactive session. So I'll be getting an understanding of what is it to be in your shoe and giving away that knowledge to the students. So I'd like to start the session with Mr. Sully. Um, as a quick introduction, you have been with Curtin Dubai as a lecturer in the School of Science and Engineering. And you are also currently pursuing your doctoral research in security of cloud computing. Would you please tell us how you got into the IT field and do you prefer the industry or academia and why? Um, thank you so much, Lanita. I'm just making that uh, uh, the microphone is uh, at the right level. All right, uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, uh, you know, um, the, for the question, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, uh, whether do you like academia or industry. So uh, as soon as I finished my education, I actually went and started an IT company here in Dubai. Uh, before that, I had actually consulted, uh, you know, my area of expertise is in cybersecurity. So I had worked as a consultant in uh, a lot of organizations here and outside uh, UAE. And uh, at some point, uh, you know, teaching has always been in my blood, I would say. So it actually got me back into doing my uh, doctoral research and getting back to the whole academia. And that's what actually brought me back. So I did not completely switch myself off from the industry. I'm still uh, doing uh, projects and things like that when it comes to industry projects and things like that as a consultant. I mean, uh, that's the maximum uh, capacity at which I could work because I'm, uh, as you know, uh, fully employed uh, in the university. Uh, so that has been the transition. So I kind of enjoy doing both. Uh, but uh, to be very honest, uh, both of them have its own advantages and disadvantages. And, uh, and the advantage I would say is that I actually get to speak to students firsthand. And that's not something that's quite, uh, I mean, that always keeps me going and, you know, always to bring back something back to the students. Uh, that's an angle which I uh, tend to enjoy a lot because most of the time, uh, I mean, I'm going to be frank. I mean, I've had... Uh, of professors who had actually no industry background and had just been in university life altogether. I mean, having that firsthand experience is uh, always important and I'm glad that I'm in a role which I'm able to actually part that to uh, my students. Lenita, you're on mute. Sorry, uh, thank you so much for that. I was just going to say that, you know, not everyone actually gets lucky enough to say I get to be a part of industry while also getting to teach. And it, it has its own perks. And the best part of it is it go home with the satisfaction that whatever you have learned, you're giving it to the generation ahead of you. So keeping that in mind, everyone's talking about cybersecurity as one of the industries with highly trending jobs of the future. So in your opinion, what sector within the IT would be redundant? Um, okay, there are, uh, I think, two parts to that. Uh, the first thing is about the trend of cybersecurity. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. If you would actually look in uh, pre-COVID, um, 2017 and 16, uh, the, uh, I mean, for instance, uh, the U.S. labor uh, statistics actually showed that there's a 28 percentage growth in the information security within IT. So that is the most fastest growing industry 
as I mean, uh, field within IT as well as the best paid in IT, I would say, uh, in the recent years. So on an average, a fresh graduate coming out of a university, um, uh, on an average, the average income, yearly income is uh, 32,000 US dollars, whereas when it comes to cybersecurity, a fresh graduate starts at uh, somewhere around 70K. And that's almost double. So uh, currently, the trend is that cybersecurity is the most in demand as well as the better paid job in IT. I mean, that is the same case as far as I have seen within UAE as well. Um, um, as you are aware, we closely work with the Dubai Electronic Cybersecurity Center, the government uh, until department who is actually responsible for the cybersecurity. Uh, within Dubai. Even according to them, uh, they have been pushing uh, cybersecurity programs throughout the universities because there is a huge demand and there's a market gap that they're trying to fill. And uh, uh, the fact that cybersecurity is some, some of the jobs in cybersecurity is sensitive. And for that reason, um, most of the time they would actually prefer uh, their own citizens to be in that space. So they are trying to develop a generation of uh, uh, young Emirati uh, locals who are experts within the field rather than always outsourcing cybersecurity from other countries. So that's the generation that they're trying to uh, build up. As for the second part of the question as to what do I think that would become redundant in IT? I mean, uh, to be very honest, uh, that's a very deep and philosophical question. I, uh, I would actually tend to think that since maybe I'm a little bit biased because I'm from the IT background, I don't think uh, in anything in IT would become extremely redundant because of the fact that what is driving everything at this point is technology. If you think about AI, blockchain, uh, big data, whatever that you think of, it is actually driven by technology. Uh, I mean, I'm sure experts here would be able to actually, uh, you know, uh, relate to that uh, at some point that at the role that they are in. Uh, for for instance, um, I have been actually seeing a lot of AI softwares which are actually handling not even AI, simple softwares that are that are able to actually handle accounts, but not the complexity of finance. I mean, you still need humans to actually do that. So I really don't think that anything in IT would become completely redundant. It would keep on going, but there was always going to be an improvement. For instance, now it's the age of big data. In olden days, we used to actually work with SQL, MySQL. We still do, but the point is that it's actually reducing because you've got machine learning in the picture, which is actually, um, which helps you to take a lot of your uh, effort that you need to put in and the machines are coming and doing things for you uh, on your behalf. So you're not being redundant, you just have to uh, change the way in which you are, your outlook to all this. Okay, so I think we could say no matter what kind of improvement that happens, there's always going to be a way the human interaction or the human need is going to be there. You just have to be adapt to it. Yeah. Uh, keeping that in mind again, do you recommend any certifications for IT or cybersecurity that students could pursue during their studies or post education, just so they um, can this again? I mean, this is something, again, I get up often asked by students directly. Uh, it really depends on the field. I mean, if even if you just take it IT, I mean, like it's broken down. You could think about networking. You could think about cybersecurity, big data, database, architecture, operating system. I mean, like there is a plethora of uh, different fields out there in IT. So it really depends on the student's interest. Like, for instance, if a student is interested in cybersecurity, for instance, and I've had currently some of my students who are just uh, in bachelor's first year, and they've already uh, been certified as, I mean, they've gotten their CEH certifications. I mean, that's great. I mean, like you get to have students with some additional background knowledge and it's always spices up your discussions within the classroom uh, with the students. So it's always an advantage. So it really depends on the student needs to understand their area of interest and then speak to someone who's an expert in that area. That's always someone who's actually working in that field. Go talk to the person. And most of the time, uh, they're always happy. I mean, like, I'm sure everyone sitting here would be happy to talk to any student when, you know, they have some doubts, you know, related to their field. Because, you know, you always tend to have that giving uh, aspect. And that's always been there. Whether sometimes I still do get some cold emails on, I mean, emails and LinkedIn messages asking, hey, uh, you know, I'm working on this. Could you actually recommend? I'm happy to do that. So speak to someone, get some idea about someone. You need, sometimes you can actually even shadow work with them. Some of them have done that in the past where 
someone's actually uh, you know shadowed me for a couple of days to see what is it like to be working in the cybersecurity industry, for instance. Um, so that gives them a good perspective of how their life would be sort of when they are in that role. So that gives them. So uh, speak to them so that they would be able to suggest. I don't want to give a general suggestion and be all be like, hey, go and do a Microsoft certification, become an MCITP or a, go for Cisco and do CCN. I don't want to give that. It really depends on the, your interest. I mean, it's something that's very specific and not general. Okay, I think the undergraduate students can definitely take note of that. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sully, for the quick you know, intro and walk, walking us through the uh, you know, background of IT. So speaking of uh, certifications post-UG, um, I'd like to move on to the finance industry. We have Mr. Prashant Gandhi, who specializes in corporate finance and uh, is a credit analyst. Um, you've spent a fair bit uh, getting certifications and qualifications, including completing your CFA while actively, uh, you know, being employed at one of the leading banks in the UAE. So first question to you, to you is, our students um, wanted to know what's the difference between an ACCA and a CFA, and if that is something they can opt, you know, if they can go for both of these certifications. Could you please walk us through? Um, sorry, you're on mute. Thanks for having me, first of all. Um, yeah, so ACC um, I'm guessing it's just not me that's that he's stuck for. Okay, uh, I'm guessing Prashant is having a bit of a technical glitch. So until that is sorted, I'm gonna quickly move on. Oh, sorry. Uh, it seems to be- an CFA, there's a lot of difference. Um, Prashant, I'm, I'm gonna have to, uh, Prashant, I'm sorry, sorry to cut you off, but we lost you halfway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So ACC and CFA, uh, both are quite different. Uh, ACC has got a lot more to do with the preparation of financial statements, uh, auditing them. You would likely be working as an auditor or an accountant if you are in ACCA. Uh, CFA has got more to do with using those financial statements to make decisions. It could be investing decisions, lending decisions, anything of that sort. So it really depends uh, where your interests lie. Uh, but I would I would uh, really advise against pursuing both because both are quite quite different and uh, having both really doesn't add that much to your profile. Okay, thanks for that. So considering the current job market and in your opinion, what would an individual ben benefit more from having a dual specialization in finance and accounts or individually? So uh, if the students do have an offer to pursue a dual specialization, I would advise to go for it because uh, it will give you a brief overview, a general idea, a general sense of both the subjects. And then maybe you can make a more informed decision uh, when it comes to later pursuing a job or a degree after that. So yeah, a dual specialization would definitely be helpful. Okay. so. What are the professions that are significantly in demand within finance industry, given uh, the understanding that you are coming from the background itself? And is there anything to look out for post-COVID era? So with, uh, in recent times, what you've seen is a lot of uh, focus on analysis-driven rules. Uh, it could be treasury analysts um, or quantitative analysts general credit analysts, equity research, relationship managers, people who are involved in sales of financial products, it could be lending or uh, uh, investing and all of that. Uh, but what we have seen post COVID is a lot of focus on tech skills. So the tech, the skill, the fine line between uh, tech and finance has been rapidly fading. I'm sure Mr. Sali would agree with me on this. Uh, you have seen a lot of demand for skills such as coding, such as cybersecurity, 
blockchain and you know skills of that sort so what i would advise is rather than uh, pursuing qualifications right away it would be better to just explore these fields and to just build skills a lot of times what happens is uh, with degrees and with certifications qualifications you do get the qualifications but you have no practical idea of how those things work in reality which can be quite different from what you have studied so uh, so i i would strongly advise to first build those skills explore all these alternate career opportunities and then decide what a student might want to do okay thanks for that um, thank you very much prashant i uh, will circle back to the question of students uh, getting the opportunity to explore uh, towards the end of the session um but since we were speaking of covid uh, covid has been a difficult time for all of us and hospitality industry has been a very vital uh, and has played a very vital role in helping through this challenging time uh, in the when the entire medical industry was in need of um getting through the patients and so forth hospitality industry was one of the few of them who were available 24/7 lending the help and getting them through so we have mr elias uh, who has been in the industry for over 10 years now and currently he is managing five different hotels in dubai uh, as a cluster director of sales for the hilton group so uh, just to get an understanding of um, how the whole process or how the whole area works could you please tell us what a day in your life looks like and how, how has it changed to mr elias thank you thank you lanita so much for this opportunity uh overall a day for for someone like me it looks like uh, every day different especially with this whole uh, new situation and the new norms that we are facing on a daily basis and it keeps changing Uh, overall for for a hospitality uh, uh, employee or or someone who work in in this industry and a travel and tourism uh, it depend on which department you work one of the key things about hospitality is how rich it is in term of different uh, uh, specifications different jobs and different roles uh, that you can see within one hotel within one entity I uh, personally over 10 years I have changed from being in a front office uh, a guest relation dealing with guests on a daily basis every hour uh, I moved to 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 managing the food and beverage department and working uh, on concepts building on menus uh, and and everything related to culinary arts or or to to beverage management and nowadays I am more into the commercial side of the business where i look at numbers i plan my day and my week on on doing uh, meetings with different partners with different potential clients by uh, going to the market and and visiting uh, uh, my my clients uh, looking what is happening nowadays how we can assist each other in this crisis uh, to go back to the crisis that we have been facing since one year uh just th- these days are very close to my heart because one year ago we decided to close our hotel and we know each other since this, since those days and for me when i started in in one of of my key hotels in dubai i opened it myself and i always had this connection so the crisis first of all it, it pushed a lot of hotel to close their doors so mostly a lot of hotels in dubai and all over the world and some of them are till now closed but we had to close and we had to uh, build a new strategy for the post covid era how we can face such a challenges Uh, how we can look at at the covid uh, and what will happen after covid as first a challenge and then an opportunity to go out of it, to be able to survive uh, we are an industry of people uh, we don't work with uh, excel sheets we don't work with codes uh, we don't work with with systems we work with people we see people on a daily basis and this is why we were one of the key industries that got affected because it's people and corona got spread through people so uh, this is what we had to face and the key things that we start working on is is mainly honesty creativity how we can create uh, a new needs and the new demands for for everyone for people who couldn't travel anymore and visit the new countries and who are usually passionate about the traveling so we start seeing a lot of staycations offer a shortcation offer now we are working in dubai on something called foodcations with dubai uh, food festivals that will start tomorrow and this is things we haven't seen before 
uh, uh, just a briefly like foodcation, it's based on your stay in a hotel and you get a lot of offers in the restaurants every day, different restaurants and different cuisine. Uh, one of the key things we start looking at because of all the offices are closed and they had a cap of a certain percentage of employees. We went there and we decided to turn our guest rooms into offices. And we did offers which we put it outside to our uh, client and to our guest and to our database, telling them that we can offer you workspace within our hotels, within our guest rooms. For a daytime, you come, you stay in the hotel, you get free Wi-Fi, you get a lot of other uh, other uh, amenities, and you 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 know you spend your day. For us also as a hotel, all these assets that we have, all these investments that our owners have put in, we can still expect a little bit of, of return coming out of it. Uh, that is very interesting to say. Uh, we never realized that, you know, although hospitality is all about people, creativity would play such a role in actually helping it surface and survive during a challenging time as COVID, uh, you know, as 2020. Um, we do have uh, at Curtin University, just to uh, let you know that we have introduced an undergraduate program. Uh, that specializes students in hospitality and tourism. And some of the questions that our students constantly ask is, having a specialization in undergraduate from hospitality and tourism, what kind of career opportunities can this degree lead to? Okay. Uh, look, hospitality management or hospitality and tourism management is, is basically business management in general, which has a certain flavors of, of different specifications which are related directly to hospitality. Uh, when you as a student go to study hospitality management, you will learn a lot of, of basic of finance, of, of uh, uh, administration, entrepreneurship. Uh, accounting, a lot of things that you learn in a business school. And at the same time, you will add to it a lot of, of, of courses related to culinary art, related to beverage, related to guest relation management, related to housekeeping, uh, uh, and, and other areas specifically you only see it in hotels and in tourism, related to specific systems that you only see like ticketing and, and how, how you manage some airports as an example, how you manage a hotel as an example, only for, for, for this kind of area. Uh, what is also very unique about studying hospitality and tourism is the opportunity to, to work during your education. Uh, by the way, that was the reason for me to go into hospitality industry. I loved the idea that I can be student and I can be successful as a student and able to, to, to finish all my courses successfully and at the same time being able to work. And in the hospitality industry, uh, getting interns and offering people the training opportunity is, is an important part of our HR strategy. We love that. And this is the best way for us as a hotels to keep ourselves out, up to date with the market because this younger generation who are now studying and who are now attending school, they will bring us a lot of best practice. So I, I believe that every student who, who, who has some passion towards hospitality and towards dealing with people Hospitality is one of the great opportunities, hospitality management as, as a course, for them to go and to start, and one year later to start looking for opportunities in the same time of them studying and develop themselves. And, uh, and honestly, like looking at opportunities in terms of work, there is plenty of them. Look at Dubai now. With the whole crisis in the last few months, we had many, many, many hotels opening, which means there is still opportunities for people to find a job and to grow within the companies. Personally, I had the opportunity to grow within the last one year where everyone thought it's it's, it's unbelievable how, how, how people can have opportunities to grow. But no, with hospitality, it's, it's an industry of opportunities at the end of the day. Thank you so much for saying that. And since you already mentioned about the intern within the industry, uh, how do students actually go about obtaining internships within the uh, within the hospitality uh, industry? Okay. Uh, in general, I, I would say there is many channels uh, for for students to be able to do internship uh, within the hospitality. First of all. As an example, this career fair, where a student attended, they got to know at least my name, maybe they will connect through together. Uh, another channel, we usually also as a hotel and as different brands, we go to, to universities and we meet with the students 
uh, LinkedIn and, and all the other career websites is a great tool for people to go and to see opportunities of, uh, uh, you know, training or internships. And what I would suggest also like Perth University, if not yet done, also it will be great opportunity for them to go uh, speak to, to HR directors and uh, hotel managers and connect with them and have this kind of, of database. And every and for me, it became best of practice. I do it every year. At the end of each uh, 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 year, I, I connect to some university. I ask them, what profiles do you have? What students do you have? Anybody is looking for an opportunity. So this is the way. It's, it's between universities effort, it's a student's effort, it's as well hotel's effort, because for us, this part is very important. And definitely, there is a plenty of online channels, LinkedIn, sometimes we post, but the only sensitive thing, sometimes we don't post as well internship, you know, so it depends also. So this is why it's important for universities and for hotels to collaborate together on that aspect. Okay, uh, I think uh, that's, that's actually a good insight. And as I mentioned previously, Curtin has just started the uh, hospitality industry. So uh, please do keep watch out for your inboxes with our um, request for you know, having our students on board. But keeping that aside, um, it, it actually makes me proud to say uh, the Curtin team actually has a dedicated team that reaches out to different HR directors of different industries to get us to get our students placed. And it makes me nothing but happy to, uh, nothing but happy to see that uh, you and the hospitality industry as a whole is something that looks forward to having interns on board and not just uh, giving them knowledge, but also exchanging it for the betterment of both parties. Um, so we have a lot of uh, students that uh, you know, speak about Expo 2020 and the opportunities that are related to it. And when one thinks of Expo in Dubai, the spotlight immediately falls on tourism and hospitality. And a lot of our students are looking to volunteer there as well. In your opinion, what is uh, what is the kind of impact the expo is going to have on uh, your industry? Uh, look, overall, ex this expo is our first expo that is happening in the Middle East area. Uh, the direct impact that it will, will create in, in our industry is a lot of demand. Uh, more people will be in interested in coming uh, to, to Dubai. Uh, more people will be interested in visiting, you know, Dubai to, to attend this expo, uh, to go to the expo during their visit. So we'll have two, two channels of demand. People who will choose this period to come to Dubai because there is expo and people who will come directly to the expo like the delegation, like a lot of businesses who are interested in featuring their products and there are new you know, companies or anything they can offer into the expo. Uh, in terms of, of number and data, what we got uh, earlier, 2019, just before the earlier dates for uh, the previous date of the expo, people were planning uh, or we are expecting 25 million visits to the expo itself. 70% of this visits were supposed to come from abroad. So will many of this abroad guests, again, will come for one reason, is for the expo only, or for the expo and other channels, or to visit other things. So I am sure it's gonna increase a lot the, the, the uh, uh, rates in Dubai, the demand in Dubai, the occupancy in Dubai. And for a small reason, which is the crisis that it happened now, we cannot really see the difference. Because we are, you are comparing, let's say, October 2021 20, uh, to October 2020, where October 2020 was very bad due to the crisis, right? It was just people restart to traveling and so on. So if I would say it will improve, it will improve a lot <laughs> just because that, but unfortunately it's not comparable. If we look at what was the estimated and the expectation from the Expo earlier, we had high expectation again of this millions of visitors with a 10 to 15% to increase in occupancy or in demand and five to 10% increase on rate during this period. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm sure the students that are watching will definitely be benefited by this information. Um, I'd now like to move on to the special guest of the uh, session uh, because she has been one of the students of the head of engineering, Dr. Pon, uh, Ms. Hiba Nadim. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you started off as a quality control engineer at JNP and you grew into various management related des designations. And currently, you're working as the project manager at eDirect Dubai. 
Um, I must say your accolades and the kind of growth you've had over the years is really impressive. So I would love to hear from your perspective on how does one go from being a student in engineering to then branching out as an expert within a different department within engineering. Thank you, uh, Lanita, for having me here. And uh, it's amazing to be a part of this panel with all the experts. And to answer your question, uh, as a beginner, no, nobody is an expert. We have to keep learning. We have to keep looking uh, for all the answers. And uh, even as a QC, when I started as a quality control engineer, I was lost, to be very honest. But then you know, I observed, um, and I had really good mentors around me. And uh, I taught myself the industry specific standards and the quality standards related to the field. And that helped me gain more knowledge. So uh, to answer your question uh, in a very simple way, from uh, going from a beginner to becoming an expert, you have to constantly seek knowledge that will help you achieve wherever you want to go in life. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I think ne learning never stops and uh, the kind of spirit you just explained is what we all need. You're, you're on mute, Lanita. Yeah, uh, so as an engineer, what skills should one develop uh, from the beginning to increase their employability chances? Okay, uh, for the skills, what I can say is that one should have um, product knowledge, okay? Um, and uh, keep looking for the USPs, the unique selling points of the specific uh, product that you are selling or that uh, the department you are in. And uh, this is something that I had learned, you know, in one of the seminars that I had attended. Um, write it down, if whoever is watching, you should go by the three C's in the life, in your life. So the first C is uh, basically courage, okay? So ha be courageous, never be afraid to ask the right questions, okay? And the second C is curiosity, stay curious. Because uh, if you think that you have all the knowledge, you are, you're wrong. Things keep changing and there, you know, there's always something new in the market. And the third C is change. So learn to be adaptable to change. Things like just with all of us, it happened with COVID. We thought that, okay, our life is going smooth. Everything is going good. But then we were hit by such a big change. So uh, that way, you know, as these are the three skills that one student must keep uh, with themselves at all times, and it will definitely help them. And uh, another thing I would like to add is that when you keep asking the right questions in your, uh, you know, wherever you are working, it even shows the company that you are taking interest and you're not just there, you're not just any other employee, you know. So you should keep, you should keep showing uh, and you should keep showing up, be enthusiastic and yes, and don't be afraid. Thank you for that. I think the three C's will also apply to all of us going through uh, this revolutionary change, although the, it, it had a negative impact, there has been a revolutionary change that COVID has brought into our lives. Um, so to focus back at the uh, engineering students, uh, yeah. what additional courses could an engineering student opt in addition to their bachelor degrees? Are there any certifications or any other courses that they can opt for to get themselves, uh, you know, stand get themselves uh, stand out with, from the competition? Absolutely, there are there are a plethora of courses out there, and it honestly depends on what uh, specific thing you are passionate about. Uh, as an engineer also, once you enter your uh, work field, uh, you might, you know, you might be more inclined towards sales or you might be more inclined towards marketing. So based on that, uh, you should do your courses, uh, have some personality development courses, uh, you know, that goes a long way as well. Even public speaking for that matter, because if you have a product, it is the best product in the market, but you don't have the ability to sell it. You don't know, you know what, what are the right things to say and how to deliver. Then it's no use, you know, even if you have the knowledge, but you don't know how to deliver it, it, it won't be of any use. So go for the additional, um, uh, additional courses that's out there and everything is out there, just a click away on Google. 
and um, yes so for an engineer also um, even for like suppose you're you're working in any any field uh, related to your specific uh, product learn more and uh, you become an expert in that way okay thank you so much for that miss heba um i think it's the future and uh, you know they will be staying ahead of us so uh, that leads us to the final guest of the segment mr abdullah who is the customer service and operations manager of business and corporation zone in the uae um thank you for joining us mr abdullah uh, as someone who has uh, over a decade uh, decades experience in dealing with government services company formation in the uae um what are the first steps a fresh graduate uh, can take when setting up a company of their own firstly uh obviously it's an absolute pleasure being part of this uh to by helping and guiding uh, our fresh graduate uh to start their route towards entrepreneurship or setting up their own businesses uh to answer the questions uh uh from my point of view uh it is mostly uh about uh having the right business plan so first you need to define uh where's your passion is going uh and what would be uh, the business a dream business that you want to have uh draft take a piece of paper think properly i want to sell a specific product then Uh, the second step before entering into uh, entrepreneurship, you need to be able to uh, have the creative thinking, uh, because your product will not be uh, sold only by you, most probably. So there will be a lot of uh, competition in the marketing in the market uh, who, where others would be selling similar products. So you need to be a creative thinker. to differentiate yourself from others in the market so once you have that unique you need to do the proper research uh, and realize that unique uh idea that will differentiate you from others wherein you can succeed once you launch your business uh once that is done basically it is a go ahead i understand that as a fresh graduate you you would have that fear or uh basically that specific knowledge for for, for example as you said you, you're a student uh of engineering for instance uh, and you know everything about engineering you're doing great you have the business idea but there are other aspects that you need to look at in terms uh when you own a company uh, you have a liability uh, you need to think of uh, fi- the financial side of business the marketing side of business the uh, rules and regulations here in the uae uh, not to get fined on something but basically run business properly and not be at risk uh, to be hit by something from a different area which you are not specialized in okay uh thank you so much for that uh you know mm-hmm. considering your background you know you, you have helped over 15000 companies start up with a new ae and more uh, so what kind of startups that are actually doing well in the current market when i personally uh think about the duration as current market i would see it from a year now uh so especially with covid hit uh a lot of uh, basically uh, activities or business activities got hit or business plan got hit which are mostly the activities that involves uh, physical presence or basically human touch uh, human interaction it got hit so uh, people had to start thinking uh, creative thinking again as mr elias have said uh, on how to overcome this challenge is by starting uh, to think more about uh, the digital side of it how do i 
change my business from this to more into being digital. So as new startups, uh, we had still uh, many companies being set up even during the pandemic, because a lot of uh, people has sold that opportunity uh, of moving towards uh, the major business activities which been set up uh, until date uh, from the when the pandemic started is going more towards the e-commerce and then the collaborative uh, collaborative uh, consumption concepts such as basically Airbnb or uh, Kareem where you don't own the item you collaborate with the you help other entrepreneur to to market their item and you benefit from that through a simple digital platform uh, that worked well, as well as digital marketing. When you have that boom in the market, everyone suddenly moved from uh, being physical or having that human catch, uh, touch, wanted to, to move online, uh, needed those people who would support them and be good uh, in digital marketing. Uh, so that's, let's say, the third or fourth activity. And then similarly, IT. IT is a viral sector now because uh, most of the IT tasks can be done remotely, except networking, I believe. So uh, IT has that, uh, it's everywhere, it's technology, and it is needed especially in such direction which people are taking moving towards digital platforms. You will have them building the websites. You, you can do multiple activities, website designs, uh, programming, applications, anything you think of in IT would be useful in this time and period of time, as long as going back to the first uh, point, what you need to plan is you know your target. You have the business plan and you know whom are you targeting before you set up your business. So as long as you know who you're targeting, with a product that you're going to sell in this uh, current situation in terms of IT, you're gonna definitely succeed. So yeah, these are the most selling activities as of the moment and since the pandemic has started. Okay, that's very interesting. And, and what I uh, am happy about is that every point that was discussed by the fellow, mod uh, fellow panelists is something that's got to do with the future that's ahead of us. Uh, so thanks for giving us that overview, Mr. Abdullah. Um, what are the common challenges that are faced by the new business owners? Uh, what kind of solutions must they look at uh, to gain optimum growth as a startup? Yes, uh, so in the past uh, 10 years, I've seen many business set up and uh, being a customer service as well, uh, I've assisted many clients. I had relationship with clients for seven years. Uh, uh, on the other side, I had startups who were unfortunately set up and not succeed uh, and close down in a matter of six months or one year, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but uh, if we talk about the challenges, uh, there will be taking that step, being an entrepreneurship, uh, w when you go that direction, you need to have your mindset would, would, would be like, all what I'm gonna face is challenges. Until I see a result, I'm ready for the challenges that I'm gonna face. Uh, so for business owners, while they have the idea, mostly they don't have the experience as a new startup. They have the idea, but they won't have the, the enough experience in terms of structure, exposure, the branding, uh, segmentation, etc. cetera. Uh, so in other words, they are yet to learn the structure of the business module. Uh, business, you know, if, if you rely only on yourself uh, saying, okay, I set up my own business and I will succeed on my own. As I said previously, you, you need to have an experience in different areas of the business. So, okay, you're, you're a good IT guy. You are a good website developer, okay? You're a good website developer. So. You set up your own business. You cannot say I was success because I'm a good website developer because that's not the only aspect of the business that you need to focus at. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of business owners miss on that point. They become a one man soldier, basically. Uh, they wanna do everything. 
they want to do the accounting part of things they want to do the marketing part of things they want to do the development the web development which they do they're specializing so you won't have the enough time so if inside of you you think i'll do it on my own yes your idea will let you reach there but you need the right resources and people to help you through your journey to reach there. So that, that's a thing, one, one point sometimes is, is a missing point for me, uh, for, for business owners, uh, one of the challenges that, that the business uh, basically fail. Uh, in terms of what I would uh, suggest for the uh, startups to start uh, to, to look at uh, is, you're a startup. You do. You don't need. You don't want a higher cost. You you're still starting. So you do what you do best, and find someone who would take care of all the admin work from you. Take care of the legalization. Take care of uh, how to properly invoice. Be the go-to. Be be, to, be basically the go-to uh, when it comes to anything you miss expertise in. Hire someone, outsource someone. You, you don't have to, to, to think, oh, I need a marketing manager. I need five admins. I need, you won't afford that as a startup. So you always start with companies to similar what our company does. We always aim to be a one-stop solution. Why? Because I will not think as a, as a business setup specialist, I will not think of just selling you a trade license, giving you a piece of paper. Where's that satisfaction in that? The, the uh, satisfaction in my job is when I see, when I see your company grows with me, basically, I help you. Whenever you need the help or assistance, I am there. Uh, you need clarity on the VAT in facing, I'm there. You need clarity on how to apply for a visa, I'm there. You know, so there, there's always, should be you should have that go to person or do, go to company to finish that and you just focus on what you best do you're, you're that amazing it developer with a bright creative ideas you do that you, you don't do the admin part of things you don't have to know everything basically as a startup uh, i think you're on mute lanita you're on mute Thank you. Uh, one of the biggest uh, learnings that I've had in, in my uh, in experience uh, being a part of business startup uh, industry is that 80% of the startup companies tend to fail because of not having the necessary resources or knowledge to push the company forward. And uh, one of the biggest takeaways that I would say from the moderation and the entire panel today is that having the necessary resources and relying on the technology uh, and the uh, you know support given by the technology available online and the right attitude we can absolutely achieve what's what is it that we visualize so with that i'd like to open the panel uh, for a generic question that is um, in your opinion uh, what are the pro tips for students when looking for jobs within your respective industries uh, I'll, I'll open the space to anyone who's willing to go first Uh, yeah, Elia. Okay, I can go. <laughs> I will volunteer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, be, be, because we said anyway, hospitality has a lot of opportunities, right, for for, for the students. Uh, I think there's a key thing for uh, for a student before applying for a job in hospitality, for such a big industry, is to know to which area he's applying and and to be prepared uh, for that. Uh, one of the key uh, things that we repeat always for people to get to know to what company you are uh, applying, you, uh, what is the culture you are going to understand it a little bit, read about it. As the other thing, you prepare, uh, prepare also read the job description about, about what you are looking for. What are the tasks? Uh, are you ready for all the skills? Did you train yourself on all the skills? Did you go through them during your courses in the university? If not, there is a lot of online platforms that help you to develop those skills. Uh, and the most important part is, is to prepare yourself as a person uh, in terms of your uh, resume, to be ready, to be updated, to be decent, to be presentable, 
um, your LinkedIn profile, and make sure you have all your assets, your 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 uh, your, your studies, your courses, your success stories. You know your key achievement before you go uh, to the job to apply for for the job. Thank you so much for that. I, I think uh, it, it applies to all the industries as well. Uh, unfortunately, with the interest of time, I'll have to uh, cut the discussion short, but I'm, I'm glad you brought up the LinkedIn uh, aspect of the conversation, uh, Mr. Elias. Um, I'm, I'm sure students watching us would be interested in connecting with you all on a personal level and probably also reach out to kind of get an understanding of how is it uh, it works within your industry and maybe learn a thing or two from your expertise. So I hope you all will be open to that. Uh, students who are watching, feel free to connect with all our uh, panelists and make the best of what the knowledge they have to offer. And students at Curtin, just a reminder that there is a dedicated careers team for you, uh, a dedicated team of uh, uh, expertise that we rely on, such as the moderators here, such as the panelists here, uh, that we try to uh, you know, give the best of everything possible. So on that note, uh, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for being with me walking us through the various questions that I had that I've received from the students and experts alike and taking your time out to actually give away some more knowledge from your busy schedule. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining. Uh, and also thank you to UAE Careers Community for having all of us uh, at their careers fair. Thank you and uh, wishing you everyone a great day. Thank, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.